she texted me about an hour ago. So I'm going to call a finance committee meeting of December 20, 2022 to order at 3 p.m. And this meeting is being held uh, remotely pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 is extended. And uh, all members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom only or by telephone. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can be adequate, can adequately access the proceedings in real time or at technological means. And uh, I also want to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded. So with that, um, I'm going to uh, just confirm that all members of the committee present um, and we know that um, one member is not present and not going to be able to join us, and that's Michelle Miller. Uh, but I'm going to uh, check with everybody else to make sure that the connections are solid and you can hear and we can hear you. So, uh, Lynn? Present. Bob? Present. Matt? Present. Bernie? Present. Kathy? Yes, here. And Michelle. I'm sorry, no, Michelle. Alicia. Present. And Michelle is not present and won't be present. So um, we're here. And I want to just uh, start by uh, pointing out what I pointed, have pointed out several times before, but for members of the public to make them, to make everybody aware that there's a, number of issues that were put onto the agenda and the reason that that happened um, that it's a very complete agenda including some items that we do not need to discuss is that the timing was that since the last meeting was last thursday at three o'clock which was exactly two business days before this meeting uh, it had to be posted before the beginning of the meeting, so we couldn't um, figure out what is going to be uh, an essential matter. The important items, uh, obviously, the budget guidelines were adopted last night, and that's uh, therefore not going to be an issue. We want to talk a little bit further about the sewer regulations. We want to talk about um, the Hickory Ridge order. Uh, those are the major items. And then we may want to talk a little bit about the special act on residential property transfer fees. Uh, I think I want to focus, uh, make that brief and process. Uh, the hope is, is that we can uh, conclude this uh, meeting and the goal is an hour, sort of using the last night's council meeting as a model for how one can be efficient in running a meeting and getting it done in record time. And uh, thank you for that, Lynn. Uh, so uh, I noticed that Amy is present. Let me just ask uh, Sean one question, and that is, uh, is Dave Zomack attending? Uh, so I, I've reached out to Dave. I think he was planning to, but I wasn't able to connect with him today. Um, so if uh, if he's not here, yeah. I can speak to the um, Hickory Ridge agenda item, but I'm going to try to see if I can get him here um, before we discuss that item. Okay. I did have several questions about the order mm -hmm. that I did not ask last night because I wanted to just save those for the committee meeting. Um, but let's um, start to just ask uh, members of the public um, if they wish to make any public comment. Public comment can be about any matter that has any relevance to the committee whatsoever. It does not you need to be something that was listed on the agenda or is anticipated for discussion. And we welcome public comment at every meeting. So uh, if there's anybody who's uh, an attendee who would like to uh, 
comment to the committee, please raise your hand so that uh, we, we know and can bring you in. Seeing uh, nobody has indicated that they wish to make a comment today, uh, then let's uh, proceed to the uh, the sewer regulation question and um, Amy Rusecki, who's the, uh, the assistant superintendent is here. Hi, Amy. Um, so you were going to come back to us if there was any further information about insurance and whether insurance might modify your prior projections about rates. So do I have that correct? Yeah, and I don't know, Sean, if you want to at least. Sure, do you want me to start? Start and I'll, I'll fill in from there. Yeah, so um, so we're working on a memo for the committee uh, as requested last time um, that sort of summarizes the process to date and does a, a you know, a, a better comparison of sort of pre-implementation of regulations and post-implementation of regulations. Um, I think, Kathy, you asked for sort of a side-by-side -side chart that showed that. So, um, so we have that uh, pretty much together. Uh, we met with an insurance company last week that um, to talk about the issue of a, a town-wide policy, um, not one for residents, but one that the town would purchase on behalf of all residents. And when, so we met with them, uh, I think it was last Monday or two, uh, maybe it was Tuesday, maybe I forget. Um, and they were working to get us a quote before today's meeting, but unfortunately they did not. They had some follow-up questions for Amy and Guilford, which they've already responded to, but it, we weren't able to get the quote for today. Um, but the, when we did speak with them, they, uh, they did say they do have some new programs that might be more along the lines of what we're looking at. Um, originally, you know, they said their normal program is that they insure broken pipes. Um, you know, when something breaks, they come in and they can pay for that. But th they did say that they have a couple cities that are doing a more proactive approach, like what we might be looking at, where there's some regular amount of um, regular replacement each year. Or if we find, you know, when we do roads, if we find, you know, lead pipes, they would cover some of that replacement. So they were gonna give us a couple different quotes for different tiers of programs that we would then incorporate into the memo that we're gonna share with you. Um, so apologize that we didn't have the information for today, but um, we should have some additional information for the council to consider uh, definitely before your next meeting. Um, and we'll put it all into that memo so you can see everything. Uh, the one thing I'll just say is, you know, at this point, even the numbers we shared with you um, last time, I just want to stress that they are still estimates. We're not setting water and sewer rates right now. Um, we won't set those until the spring. We're really just trying to convey that the water and sewer regs as currently drafted, they will likely have some significant financial impact on, on the enterprise funds that will boost up the rates. If we can find an insurance program that is less expensive, we will pursue that. Um, and But just, we just want to make sure that you know that that's sort of an estimate at this point, it will likely change by the time we come back to you with actual um, rates in the spring. Uh, but we will get that memo out to you as soon as we have that information. And we oh, thank yes. you for, for uh, Bob in particular for sort of stressing, you know, some of these programs uh, for us to look into. Well, thanks for looking into it, appreciate it. <clears throat> so a uh, question that I have is uh, the rates in, uh, would are being affected because of the change of who's responsible for uh, repair of sewers, sewer lines within the right of way. If we didn't make that change, then the, um, is there anything in the bylaw that really affects the or the or the regulations that affect the rates? Amy, that's the largest part of the change, right? With within the sewer regs, but within the water regs, there were some other things that would have some impact on the rates, correct? Yeah, I mean, as you're looking at the sewer regs, the only thing that's really going to impact rate setting is that ownership issue, because that's the one thing that's a you know a major change from what we're doing and what we have to comply with on a state and federal level anyway. Um, on the water side, the only other, you know, kind of major financial difference is um, 
the ownership of water meters, where right now the town owns the smaller water meters and the larger ones we've had um, the customer own it. Um, and now it, the, the problem with the customers owning it is just, you know, when it breaks, sometimes they're really kind of drag their feet on getting a repair and that sort of thing, or they're, you know, not as good at getting them calibrated on an annual basis, that sort of thing. And so we just want to own all of them and then we can replace them when needed. We can calibrate them on a regular basis um, and make sure that they're all operating. Um, and that's going to be directly reflected in the, um, the quarterly like rental fee that you pay for a meter. Um, it, that's not going to impact residential people. It's going to be people with the larger diameter meters that will see a, a change, a slight change in their um, meter rental rate to reflect the cost. Thank you. Um, Kathy? Thanks. Um, Andy actually asked most of what I was going to ask about this issue, but I want to make sure when we get the um, estimates back from you, Amy and Sean, that we keep this as a separate issue in case we want to go forward with all the regs except this ownership change um, that we want to wait a year. So it's just, you know, identify it as separate. So my question is um, about a couple years ago, Bernie and I, on behalf of the committee, actually after a presentation from you all, from a consultant, talked about going up on that quarterly rate for, that was by meter size to be thinking of it, it was prepayment for capital costs. And it was, we wanted to see if we could structure it in a way that it mainly hit large users. And in this case, it would be the, the colleges and the universities, you know, and, and so it was a question that you were gonna take a look at coming back up with some what ifs, you know, and I didn't know whether that went to a back burner because one of the issues, what I remember is you didn't, you didn't have a data system that made it easy for you. You were doing some manual things that allowed you to look at this. So, and I don't think we should be doing this now, but I would like to put that into the mix of how we are thinking about these rates. So again, I think when we talked about it, if we were going to do anything, we would have to do it announce it a year in advance. So UMass, Amherst, Hampshire, you know, the big users would know what was coming. So yes. first was keep it separate when we get them out. And second was what happened to that other idea. So, so Amy, okay, if I jump in on. Go, so that, so that other I'm idea, Amy and I have worked together on that. Um, so we have the data, we have sort of the, the first piece of information that's needed for that. Um, I think we were calling it a water rate analysis and, and looking at our, our structure um, and seeing if we want to explore different structures. Um, so we were able to uh, pull out information that showed usage by account um, that we could total. So we, and the, and the reason why that was important was that way we could say, you know, we could say if you use this much uh, during the year, you build at this rate. If you use this much, you uh, will be built at a different rate. Um, and then also apply different meter charges or fixed charges to those accounts. So, so we do have that initial data set to run uh, different scenarios. Um, the one thing that I know uh, Guilford was looking into was, and this might be from prior conversations, the thing we don't have is um, you know, if we wanted to look at models where owner-occupied properties paid a different rate than uh, uh, residential properties, um, that type of information is not in the data set in a way that uh, is reliable. Um, so he was looking at some of those other pieces at working with um, Mike Warner and, the G uh, and use, utilizing GIS and some other data sets to see if he could pull in that information. Um, I don't know if at this point that's necessary. I mean, we may be able to just run some basic uh, models to, with what we have to see what it would do. Um, so, so that's a conversation we can revisit when, you know, when we have time to do it as a, as a group. Cause I think we had a working group, um, with, um, I think Bernie and Kathy, you guys were on the working group with us to look at that so we can reconvene soon. Okay. And, and just for people who weren't, I can't remember who was there on what cycle, but I can find that memo again and we could just post it. So what we were talking about, cause I think Bernie, my memory is we focus mainly on the quarterly rate, less on the the volume of use rate because we were told we're already low users. We were trying yeah. to shift. Yeah, we, we were we, trying we, to we shift some. 
yeah, looking at the quarterly rate, looking at, I think the other thing we talked about was uh, um, uh, it balancing that, that qu those quarterly rates against meter size so that the larger users paid more and took some of the burden off the smaller users. Yeah, and we were really trying to do it in a way that it was either neutral or saving for the smaller, you know, the mm -hmm. small, the small meter size folks. Mm -hmm. So in any case, that was, it was a framework of thinking, could we shift it, um, shift some of the capital costs, actually prepaying some of our capital costs was part of the argument for this. Um, okay, I'm so I'll stop. Well, and as I recall, Kathy, some of that was also just looking at right now, like especially during the pandemic, when all the water users left, all of a sudden, our water rates being only based on how much water you use, it meant that our revenues were really low for a couple of years. And so it was, you know, finding a system that, you know, we've got fixed costs, how can we have a little more fixed income and have it less reliant on how much water, because the reality yeah. is cost isn't you know, incremental to the amount of water that we produce. Absolutely. So it's just kind of Absolutely. restructuring and rethinking. Absolutely. That was, that was a piece of it that will continue, yeah. whether the, you know, yeah. we're in pandemic or right. pandemic or not. So, right. um, yeah, trying to, like, like um, you know, so it's, Kathy's correct. We're trying to prepay some of our capital costs, but also uh, uh, stabilize our revenue um, source some. Um, we'll never quite, I, I don't know what way we could, do that 100%, but we could absorb a little bit of it. Andy Lynn has yeah. a oh, Lynn. Um, so I'm feeling like this is starting to get even more complicated, okay? And it, because it's rested with finance, TSO, and GOL, I think those are the three committees, um, when we get it all together and we're ready to bring it to the council, we need to, and I've said this before, and we've started looking at when can we do this? We need to have a, I don't want to say public forum, but a community forum where we roll out the, the plan and the anticipated impact on residents. And I, I just want our staff and the finance committee, as well as, you know, a couple of us, a couple of you, particularly Andy serves on TSO. Um, while Michelle's not here, she serves on GOL. Um, to think about what it is we want to make sure is part of that presentation. And it's a presentation about the changes in the bylaw the changes in the cost and the time frame for implementation. Okay, thank you. Bernie? Yeah, um, I, I think, <laughs> yeah, this is caught up in committees, plural. Um, and while we're all taking some time to debate this, uh, my concern and curiosity is, uh, how's this impacting our keeping up with the requirements for a NIPTES permit? And permits, plural. Um, are, are you just asking how we're doing on the water and sewer side in terms of keeping up with permits? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we're we're fine, but you know we're maintaining permit. But um, you know, some of the stuff in these regs will give us a little more um, teeth to mm -hmm. be able to, I guess, do a better job with stuff like grease maintenance. Where yeah, we're surviving, but our guys are spending a lot of time doing you know, maintaining the collection system because we don't have as much teeth right now to try to manage the grease, um, you know, the grease problem like we would like to. Okay, because what I, uh, you know, again, if uh, our discussion of, of fees is going to get in the way with our, our compliance with uh, the EPA and state regs, um, that's, that's troublesome. That could be costly in more ways than one. And you just, can I follow up on that, Andy? Mm -hmm. I'm just on a, if there's a part of this, Amy, that just should move forward, that is not about this other issue, including Greece. <laughs> um, you know, it seems to me, Lynn, it was what you were saying is the form is about the other bigger change, but I think those are separable if we decide 
to separate them. So it goes with Bernie's question. There's a part of this that is just good management and we need to make some of these changes as opposed to the ownership change, which is a big, um, it's got a cost consequence, but it's also a big shift. It's not required to get the grease out of the traps in the same way. <laughs> so Lynn, I'm just thinking that even that forum should be able to separate the two to say some of this could go on the books, not tomorrow, we have to vote it. We just have to make sure the wording is right and it doesn't have to swirl around committees all of this time. Um, and the other is uh, a more significant change. So as far as residents are concerned, uh, I'm sure grease traps matter for restaurants. <laughs> yeah, uh, Amy, this is actually also part of that. Is this more complicated and that is you know, as I was putting together material for the state of the town address, you know, I go back over previous agendas and so forth. And I think it was toward the middle, maybe summertime of 2021, that we passed two other bylaws that were related to water and sewer. And we were asking questions then about their financial impact. I'm not going to come up with their acronyms or their correct names, okay? Yeah. Uh, but what my ask, my question is, is does any of this relate to impact that or get included in that? Uh, no, it's a good question. And those are actually, those are separate. So that was, um, believe it or not, it was the other infrastructure in town. It was stormwater, um, yeah, not you. water and wastewater. And that thank is you. a, you know, federally mandated, you know, by our NIPTES permit for stormwater um, regulated. And so those, we had deadlines that they had to get passed by certain dates. The regs now, um, the water and sewer regs as are before you, um, you know, some of it is just kind of codifying our current practices. And some of them are also saying, here's all of these federal and state regulations that I'm being held to the water department and the sewer department are being held to that, you know, we need to make sure that the, the homeowners and the businesses are doing their part. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. at the end of the day, we can still kind of, because of the state regs, we can still kind of hold people to stuff, mm -hmm. but it's better to have it in one place because I want everyone to know what the expectations are, not having to, you guys don't have to be water and sewer experts, um, but I know you want to do the right thing. It's all going to be written there. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, we're trying to modernize the bylaws to make them uh, both read as they should because they're quite old and they were they've kind of been pasted together over a number of years and they're not a consistent code so that they're hard to follow, hard to find, and um, we want to make our regulations readable and findable by all. And that's uh, an advantage there. Uh, whether ho most homeowners will think it's an advantage is a different question. When they find out that uh, then there may be a penalty that's attached if they throw things into uh, uh, the toilet that clogs the system, and their consequences for them for doing the wrong thing. They may not like that. Um, the question that uh, uh, one customer in particular raised uh, about the, uh, the street and the expense that she was incurring, which was, I think, on the water side, was really uh, where we, where, what we've been doing a lot of time on is thinking about um, who's responsible for repairs under the right of way. And, uh, you know, people are gonna have to pay a little bit more. It's kind of like buying insurance, except the insurer is the town, unless we pass it on to another insurer, uh, but they're getting the benefit of not having to incur a potential cost that is high by paying a lower amount in their monthly bill that shifts the responsibility. 
and how and whether they, how they grab that, I don't know. So I don't think there is there anything else we can do today, or are we on hold now um, for until we get more information on the insurance and how that might impact um, rates. I think we're on hold now, but we do want to um, bring it back um, sort of as soon as we can. So um, you know, we probably won't meet again before the holidays. But thinking about you know whatever that first meeting is that we would normally have in January, um, having it ready to go. Cause I know that there is urgency in the uh, public works department to get these regulations through and um, moving forward. So we don't want, uh, we'll send up, even if we don't have a meeting scheduled, we'll send the memo out for people to review and um, process as soon as we have it ready. Okay. So anything else that anyone wants to raise on this issue or ask Amy at this point? Seeing no hands going up, uh, Amy, thank you very much. You've, as always, been very informative and helpful. And enjoy the holidays. Thanks. Yeah, happy holidays to you guys. And thanks, as always, for continuing to move this forward, because this has been a pet project of mine for a long time. So I know, and I, yeah. <laughs> I just want to get it done right. Yes. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Um, Okay, so Dave Zomek is here. Um, I don't know, uh, for the benefit of our resident members of the Finance Committee who are not counselors and were not at the meeting probably last night at the point where we um, had the presentation, I can't remember. I'll ask uh, Bob, Matt, and Bernie, were you there during the presentation regarding this? I don't know, Dave, if you want to just uh, give a very brief um, summary of what was happening, and then we can get into the, uh, which then introduces the order. Sure. Um, very briefly, um, as part of the work we're doing to develop Hickory Ridge into a community resource, uh, trails have been consistently one of the main features that residents uh, would like to see there. As uh, the council knows, I'm developing with my staff a comprehensive plan that'll include a number of potential uh, avenues we can go down for the, the, the development, if you will, the utilization of Hickory Ridge. Solar is already underway there. They will break ground on the solar in, in January. This is AMP Energy. But the trails, uh, we, we um, staff, as we often do, went out and, and began to look for funding outside of the town of Amherst. Um, we're fortunate to have some funding for trails coming through CPA, that's $120,000. And then we applied for what's called a park grant through the uh, office of um, uh, the um, uh, EOEA, the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs, has uh, an annual park grant application, and we applied for uh, funding through that office for $280,000, and we were successful in getting that. We've looked at the property. Um, we've looked at the assets of the property, the limitations of the property, the opportunities we have there, without compromising any of the future uses of the property, including potentially a South Amherst fire station, uh, affordable housing, community center, and the list goes on, uh, we identified a place on the Western portion uh, of the property for an accessible trail. The trail would be quite simple. It would take advantage of already existing trails that are there for the old uh, golf cart, the golf, excuse me, the gol golf cart paths. And we would improve some of those with uh, crushed stone, benches, kiosks, uh, signage, et cetera. And so together, this would be about a $400,000 project. Um, we have to go through extensive permitting, of course, because it's close to the river and in resource areas. Um, and we need to come before the council uh, for two reasons. One is that when you receive a park grant, you do need to designate a portion of the property you were improving for essentially passive recreation. That's the carrot and the stick. Uh, the state gives you money, but they would like you to make sure that the town doesn't do something else with that portion of the land in the future. And then the second part of that is to um, 
is to uh, hold on one sec. I have this up is to uh, transfer. I want to get the language right here. Um, is to appropriate and transfer the funds um, for this purpose. So the uh, the council has already appropriated the hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars in CPA funds and the other $280,000 is coming from a state grant. So there is no new money involved in this project. Uh, the state wants to make sure through a town council vote that the package is complete, that the town has committed all of the money to go toward this project. So those are the two steps outlined in the order. And um, if, if, um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. So let me, divide the questions into two parts. One is about the project and the other is about the order. And uh, why don't we do the project, if there are any project questions first, um, to, add, to do those and then um, and do while we're doing that, Sean, if you can get ready to put the order on the screen uh, when we get to the second set of questions, it would be helpful to be looking at the order as we have the discussion. Is that, do you have it available? Andy, yeah. I have both, um, and I, Sean, I noticed had to um, mute and put his screen up. So, but I need somebody to let me uh, be allow me to share my screen. And I don't um, know if Athena or Sean can do that. You should be all set now. Thank you. Okay. Great. Hold on. So, the, are, are there questions about the project first? Lynn? No, I was offering to just put okay. the map up if you wanted so to. So why don't, uh, um, uh, Bernie, is it about the... What's yeah, the it's about the project. I'm looking at the map and uh, that Andy that you sent along and, and it, uh, it seems pretty straightforward. Um, there's an existing path that's gonna be rehabbed. There's gonna be some new construction of a, of a trail. So it mm -hmm. seems to me to be really, really pretty straightforward. Um, and as usual, Dave's got all his bases covered and, and has the, uh, the, <laughs> the, he's got the work plan on the dollars in hand. So the only question I would have is that little bridge that's in there up in the upper left-hand corner, is that gonna be part of the rehab or or uh, no? Yeah, no, good, good question, Bernie. Just if I could, for those members who were not at the town council meeting or haven't heard about this, just, just to, put an emphasis on, you know, I think you're familiar with Hickory Ridge, you can see in the lower uh, right hand corner, you can see where the clubhouse is the former clubhouse, the parking lot and the outbuilding um, is near where I don't know if that's Lynn's or Athena's cursor. Um, but what we wanted to do is st stay well aware away from that area because that is a likely area for redevelopment. If we put a fire station there, that is where it would go. There are very few places on this property where development can go. So we don't want to dedicate a portion of the land for permanent passive um, uh, um, uh, activities, um, recreation, uh, and somehow compromise uh, our, 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 our opportunities, limit our opportunities later. So that's why it's over to the, to the West. Um, and so in green, just so everyone knows, um, those are existing cart paths. They're either paved or they're crushed stone. They're in green and they're pretty extensive. And then in yellow are the areas that we would add. We will rehab the green areas if they're crushed stone and we will add the areas in yellow. Um, and then Bernie's question, um, we are leaving that bridge, which is in pink or that reddish pink color. Um, we're leaving that for now. Uh, this grant does not rehab that bridge. That's one of those bridges. There are five bridges over the Fort River that are that with the town owns, and we'll really have to decide which ones we want to keep. And if there are ones that go away, which ones are those? We have not gotten to that point. We do, by way of uh, AMP Energy, we have. What's really great is they had to do an engineering study of all seven bridge, uh, all five bridges uh, over the fort. So we have the benefit of having that engineering study. So we know 
what condition each one of the bridges are in. That one's in fairly good condition. We'll probably leave it for now. Uh, but the grant does not pay for any improvements. You can see in the upper left-hand corner, the Western Array, that's part of the Western Array. And as I said, that will be under construction in mid to late January. The arrays will, um, um, we've, we've arranged a pilot pay, uh, payment in lieu of taxes for the, for the arrays that I believe is in the 65 to $70,000 range annually. Um, so uh, that is part of the, the equation out here and the, and the comprehensive plan for Hickory. So any so, other qu questions I'm happy to take? Yeah, I have one about the map and, and this came up last night and that is right now you park over here where my pointer is. Mm -hmm. And this is built to be an accessible trail, but this area here is the developable land. So at some point, can we still move, you know, some kind of parking into here so that it's accessible to the trail and not compromise whatever we might do in this area? Yeah, absolutely, Lynn. And I think I alluded to this the other night, but maybe I wasn't clear that, you know, for the time being, for the next couple of years, likely, um, we will not be breaking ground on anything uh, is my guess in that area for a couple of years as we get as we get all of our ducks in, in a row for the large capital projects. But for instance, if we decide to put a um, fire station there, we would decide where it would go in the developable footprint. And so the, the, the limitations would only be on the area in the blue dotted uh, acreage. It would not be outside of that. So we can move the parking wherever we need to move it. Now, keep in mind, we have to provide parking. This will be the only parking area that I can see for all of Hickory Ridge. So whatever we do with the developable area, it's got to provide more parking than just for this accessible trail. People need to be able to park here to access the entire 150 acres because we won't have any other parking. This is likely all we'll have because all the other land around it is privately owned and quite limited. So, so we will need to incorporate the parking for the resource um, within or, or make it complementary to whatever municipal use we decide to, to have there, be it affordable housing, be it a, a community center, be it a, a fire station or a combination thereof. And it's all, it's all very doable. We actually have a, um, we have a landscape architect firm right now working on modeling for us. So they are modeling uses of the developable land where the clubhouse is now. So that'll all be part of the comprehensive plan. So you'll be able to see how things can sit and move and what uses might be complementary. For instance, a fire station, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. A fire station may not be complementary to um, dense affordable housing. Those two uses may not go well together for a variety of reasons. Whereas a fire station and a small, say if we wanted a community center, those would go nicely together. Or a, a fire station and less dense senior housing might go well together, something like that. So, so we're doing modeling on where that would fit on the frontage now. And I do have one other question before we go from the map. Dave, do you see, I mean, we've actually gone off out and walked many of the trails rough as they are. Do you see over time trying to get park money for other trail development? Again, Lynn, great question. Um, absolutely. We already have funding through the CDBG program. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I know everyone's, um, you know, balancing a lot of different projects and, and things we're all working on here as staff. So we are already, we already have a, um, a very well-researched extensive trail uh, network um, draft for the entire property, which includes a north-south connection uh, going all the way up to um, 
the Brook and yeah. Mill Valley Apartments to the north, as well as looping around both solar arrays. Mm -hmm. So what we're in the process of doing, we have, I believe, $180,000 in CDBG money to make that North-South Trail happen. And then if all goes well with this ADA trail, we'd have $400,000 to make this trail happen. Um, so if all goes well with the council on this funding, we would put together what's called a comprehensive notice of intent to the Conservation Commission for both trails at the same time. So we, it's better to bundle that as opposed to coming in, oh, we're gonna do a notice of intent for the ADA trail. Oh, now we're gonna do a notice of intent for the, for the North-South trail. No, we're gonna bundle the whole thing together, bring it before the Conservation Commission. It needs to go through the commission, the Department of uh, Environmental Protection and the Natural Heritage Program all at once. Mm -hmm. So the goal might be if all goes well that we hire one contractor to build the accessible trail as well as the North-South Trail at the same time. Thank you. Jeffrey. Um, just building on that, Dave, um, I think the map that we're looking at just is focusing on this part. As I'm remembering the developable. That is true. It goes more toward the west beyond that parking lot. Um, there's, there's an area. So at some point, I don't need it now, but for me, I like to see the whole property as much as possible and then move down. Um, and I know you're working on the other trail system, but when you just rattled off possible options, uh, I think a lot of us have been thinking about that seven to eight acres you talked about as developable. <laughs> um, and so just um, if we could get the, the full map and then at some point when you've got the other trails. I'm just, those are really different options you just ran off. So just some sense of when we, I don't need it now for this issue at all. I'm fine with this, but just for me to be able to think of what we're saying yes to and what's coming and when we're gonna be making decisions about the other pieces. Um, right, well, th yeah, sure. Um, as I said, this grant came up and we, you know, as we often do, oh, yeah. um, we, we need to take advantage of it, but all the elements of the comprehensive plan are not ready and they probably won't be ready till February, maybe early March at this point with the loss of two planners in, in my department. But um, I would think that by early March, we could present a draft um, conceptual plan for the council and for the conservation commission and planning board, any other committees and boards that'll show all of the different options. Um, and, and that'll show trail options that'll show development options, uh, ecological restoration options, uh, an amphitheater, you know, a number of things that could be done out there. Um, so yeah, the answer is yes, Kathy, all is that that is coming. I will say that the developable land you are looking at uh, just about all the developable land, if you make, an, uh, I, I think that's Lynn controlling that, most of the developable land is right in this map and it is right in that area. As we've looked at this, and this will all be covered in the comprehensive plan, but it is, uh, other than the solar area, which was developable for solar, but not for residential or other uses because you couldn't get over the river uh, for, for those uses, what you see is what you get for developable land for the most part right in there is the okay. highest the highest driest and land outside of um estimated and priority habitat so everything to the the my left of the blue line which now is going to be recreation we're also protecting it for recreation all yeah. of that land is undevelopable because of wetlands develop. or rare species or floodplain in fact, as you may recall from the council meeting the other night, some of this trail will flood. Yeah. Uh, this will flood a number of times in the year, but if we design it correctly as a crushed stone trail, it should be no worse for wear. Okay. Uh, when, the, when the water recedes, we might take a tractor over it and rake it and off it goes. But that's why we don't want to put in a trail like that over at the Conti Refuge, because you wouldn't want to put a um, pressure treated lumber trail in there because um, when you get five feet of water, that pressure treated lumber is going to go downstream and you're going to lose thousands of dollars worth of investment. 
but yeah, we're happy. The short answer is yes, we're happy to share all of that in the next 45 to 60 days with, with everybody, Kathy. Okay, thank you. Bernie? Yeah, as I, I said to Dave some time ago, you know, if you ask uh, 100 people what they'd like to see in this property, you're going to get 150 different responses. So, you know, good luck with the, with trying to compile those. Um, the, uh, the the small piece of developable land, uh, that discussion is pulling away from the, the project and at the risk of continuing to do that. Uh, our fire department tends to be very data driven. And... Um, um, for one, and for two, no matter where you want to put a firehouse, people won't like it. Um, so I, I, my question would be is, is, before we say we could put a fire department here, have we talked to the, to the chief and his staff about what their data tells them in terms of a location and where, they, uh, where the bulk of the responses are, from, from primarily for the ambulances, because uh, that's where the, the most business seems to be? I think, that, again, the short answer there is yes, we have talked to the chief. If you talk to the chief, he will say he would be fine with a station at um, at Hickory Ridge. Is it the, you know, is it the 100% absolute ideal location? Um, probably a little far south, but um, not out of the question at all. So mm. I think... When when I move forward, you know, you know, uh, bringing this before various committees and boards, I always had in the back of my mind that it could be a location for a fire station. And as we grapple with the four capital projects, with DPW on, you know, on on South Pleasant Street and the limitations of that site, and and land values going through the roof, and and the pandemic, et cetera, and and inflationary factors. You know, we bought this for 520000 and if we need it for a South Amherst fire station, um, again, I think that's just value added to this bargain sale that we were able to pick up. Um, and, mm -hmm. and again, it's uh, sixty-five to $70,000 a year in, um, in, um, in pilot payments. Um, that 520 comes back to us uh, in, in very short order, and, and then... If we we have a free fire, if you will, not a free, but a very low cost fire station site here. The fire station, my understanding is it's about three acres is what a fire station, uh -huh. three, three and a half acres. Um, now, again, there's some topographic changes here. We're looking at a flat aerial view here. So I don't want anybody to think if, you, if you're really curious, take a look at the uh, the GIS and you'll see topo lines and flood lines and, mm -hmm. and rare species habitat and all of that. We've already done all that mapping. So that's why we know where development can go here and we'll share that with you in the coming months. But um, it, might, it definitely yeah, can might, fit here. I, I, Dave, I think that the whole project, the land purchase and everything else is is, uh, is very worthwhile and, and very been very well handled. My sole concern in terms of uh, Placing the fire station in this property would be, you know, is is it going to have an adverse impact on response times? And if, response time, uh, totally get it. And if the chief and his staff, and I guess what you said, they're very sophisticated in terms of the use of data. If they feel that uh, it's not going to have an adverse impact on the response times, and it's suddenly a, a, a viable site, and I agree with you that uh, it would be a bargain. And I, I know Lynn has worked on that issue as, as long, if not longer than I have. So happy to have other voices. Uh, I think it's a, maybe a little early, but I just wanted to put it out there that it's certainly possible uh, from a land use standpoint to fit a fire station here. Yeah, uh, there's so many other factors involved, but it's a you know, viable site, best site, best available site. I mean, there's so there's sort of, that's fun which one you pick from. Um, let's get, um, see what Matt has to ask and then um, switch over to the order is what's on the screen after Matt introduces his question because I think we need to move to the order. Matt? Yeah, thanks, Andy. Um, yeah, Dave, I, I wanna echo what's been said. It's really an exciting project and um, great value. And <clears throat> I guess my, um, my question is, because I and I am toggling over to the larger map that's posted on the um, on the site, the Hickory Ridge web, website, just to get my head around it a little bit. So, um, develop there is no 
there is no developable developable land <laughs> um, north of the river. Is that correct? Uh, any of the land that could be developed north of the river is being developed for solar. And it's important to keep in mind that um, we came into, we didn't structure the deal the way it is. Just as yeah. a reminder, yep. solar was already planned before we got into the deal. So the only reason we got the the uh, bargain sale of 520 was some of the value was already taken with those two solar arrays. Yeah. So. And then um, my other question, just, I, and I know that fire, that, you know, generally this is a, the location that fire wants to be, I think. Um, is there an acreage? Uh, do you have an acreage estimate for DPW yet? And, and a sense for, I mean, ruling this out for DPW? Yeah, that's a good question. DPW, the, um, Footprint for DPW is at least twice as large as um, as uh, fire. Um, I have always said, and I'll be consistent to say that the ecological sensitivity of this site, um, I think, precludes trying to move DPW from the edge of the Fort River upstream where we know DPW, you know, just by the nature of its operations, it is an impactful operation and we all depend on it. Um, uh, but to move it down to this area, uh, this is the developable area is very long, thin and narrow here. There is no depth to it. We're looking at sites around town where DPW would have kind of a rectangular square to rectangular site that might be seven, eight, nine acres um, in shape and easily accessible um, from two sides. So so that's kind of the the the, the lenses by which we're looking at um, um, at DPW. So we've never you know we looked preliminarily at this site and ruled it out fairly quickly as a site for DPW. But early on, said fire would fit nicely and it would be a compatible use. Yeah, we are working on some other sites for DPW. Yep. All right, and no park. I mean, there's okay. And and the other, my other question, I think you answered already. There is no other parking option than the current existing spot for it. And I mean, I, um, I now, um, yeah, that's basically true. So, so we will make connections to this property via, um, as I said, via. Um, the Brook uh, condominiums, Mill Valley apartments. We're, we're dialoguing with both the leadership of the Brook and Mill Valley. We we also will make a connection out to West Street so that people can walk and bike from uh, the neighborhoods to the north of Hickory over to Mission Cantina, El Comolito, et cetera, over in the village center. But we don't have parking. We don't have public land in either site that would be conducive to parking. So most of the parking will be here. Now, right now, just to give you a sense, I think there are about 115 to 120 parking spaces in that parking lot right that you see on the screen. Do we need 100 parking spaces for conservation, open space, recreation interests at Hickory Ridge? No, we do not. So in scope and scale, we clearly do not need that much square footage um, for a parking to support the recreation and conservation um, uh, uses. So I think if that gives you a little sense here that, that you could have a fire station, you could have a community center, you could have some housing, whatever, but also have a modest public uh, gateway to the land in a smaller parking lot. Um, you know, sure. yeah, even where the cursor Absolutely. is, for instance, uh, potentially there, uh, or or you might, frankly, that might be where your fire station is. I don't want to preclude anything at this point because there's some topographic and other issues there. There's a couple of streams that even come in. So yeah. So um, think of the, if you've been over to the Conti Refuge over on Moody Bridge Road, that's a very popular uh, spot. They get over 50,000 visitors a year use that trail. Their parking lot, maybe 25 cars, maybe. Um, so just to give you a sense, we're probably looking at a, you know, a 20, 25 car parking uh, lot. Does that make sense, Matt? Does that answer your question? 
Well, that's really good context about the size of the lot too. I didn't realize it was that big. So that that's a game changer. And I, I think it's a really cool idea. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, I, we, we can always do more mixed use um, and more mixed access things. And so, you know, a, a trailhead that goes past the fire station, I think is, is just wonderful. You know, it's great. Yeah. And again, really important that context, that is a huge parking lot. Yeah. In fact, we're using it right now to help Caracas construction stage for the Pomeroy Village Center. So you get an idea when you drive by there and you kind of go, oh, that's over 100 cars. We do not need a trailhead parking for 100 cars. This isn't a national park or, right. you know, even the Notch Visitor Center, you know. When you go up to the Notch Visitor Center, sometimes you see that that place yep. packed. I yep. don't think we'll ever need something that large. This right. is not going to be that big of a destination. No, it's great. Thank you. Okay. So um, anybody object to switching to having the order on the screen now and uh, being able to talk about it? And then we can uh, get towards the conclusion of today as planned. So I, I'm going to start with one thing that um, has been on my mind for a little while, and that is I looked back on the order for the um, CPA, and if I've got the correct order, it is actually in 2307A that allocated $150,000 of CPA funds for Hickory Ridge Trail improvements. So mm -hmm. um, I need Sean to confirm it eventually that I have that correct. But if it is, then there's um, it, uh, it needs to be listed consistent with what's um, in, on the website where uh, Athena puts all of the orders. Andy, uh, and Andy, what are you questioning uh, in, somewhere in, on this in order? Both, in uh, part B? I think it was in A that it's if I because uh, I looked earlier in the day, it was 20 and it was in it's 20, council uh, order 23 07. You're saying it might be 23 A 07 or 2307? 2307 was broken out into ABC mm -hmm. or okay. there was multiple parts to it. Yeah, I'll double check. And, but I think it was $150,000 was allocated in 20, in that order for Hickory Ridge Trail improvements. Yeah, so, it was 150, but Dave is not requiring all of that for this, uh, for this match. Right, uh, we're just saying right we need, amount. We need 120 of the 150 to make this match happen. The other 30 is is un, un diff, you know un, unattached, not attached to this trail. That that 30,000 can still be used on other trails at Hickory. Do you follow that? And I would com combine with the CDBG money that you otherwise described. Correct. Yes. To take care of the North South Trail and any other trail improvements that are necessary. Correct. So we'll get the order num uh, order 23 of its part A, we'll we'll add whatever Sean and Sonia determine yeah, on that. There should yeah, be an I'm, A at the end, 2307A. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Athena. Um and I think that you've uh, already answered uh most of my other questions that I had without realizing you were. Um, so, uh, as far as Sonia, everything else that you have is um, adjusted for. Ron and I, um, I may have one other question, but I'm going to go to Matt and Bob, whose hands are up. And if they haven't gotten to the thing that I was uh, trying to frame a question around, I'll come back. Um, Bob? Matt, Matt was first. Yeah, Matt's hand went. Uh, it was a, that was a relic. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I okay. Uh, Bob was next, and I saw that uh, 
Felicia's hand was up briefly, so we'll see if she is in, but go ahead. Bob. Felicia had to leave, so the record should show that she's left. Okay. The yeah, I had just a few questions about sort of qualifying or, you know, just make sure I understand. Um, in uh, paragraph A here, um, you refer to map 19D parcel 10. Is that exactly the area that's delineated on the map? Or is it larger than or smaller than that particular area? Um, I'm sorry, Matt, you were asking whether um, Bob, Bob, oh, Bob asked Bob, about sorry. where it yeah, says. I'm uh, asking whether you, you know, the map that you showed with the dotted lines around the. Oh, oh yes, I got you now. You yes. So, so, yeah. Parcel 10. So the language is important here. It says the care, custody and uh, control of a portion of Hickory Ridge consisting of the land. So parcel uh, assessors map 19D parcel 10 is the entire uh, 150 acres. So okay. we are simply saying a portion of that containing 17 acres is transferred from the town manager to the Recreation Commission okay, for park okay. and I, recreation purposes. That, okay, I just was, it was a little confusing. Um, the other question is, is there a zoning change that's required for this? No, okay. no zoning, no zoning doesn't affect zoning in the least. The zoning is uh, outlying residential. It's not a very, you know, uh, yeah, it's outlying residential, but there's no zoning impact whatsoever for this. I um, should say that um, the actions in part A are very similar. We did a very similar thing when we accepted the park grant at um, uh, uh, Groff Park and Kendrick Park. We, again, carrot and stick, the, the state says, we'll give you this money, but you town of Amherst have to make sure you dedicate that land so that you don't change your mind five years from now and turn that park into a whatever, a school site or a wastewater treatment plant or a parking lot or whatever, so. No, I, I understood. Um, yep. Will there be any delineation on the ground of where this parcel begins or where this area is preserved begins and where it ends? No, but we, there won't be any real delineation on the ground, but we will need to survey this and record it at the Registry of Deeds. Mm -hmm. So it will go in um, and be recorded so that in perpetuity, people will know that 100 years from now, the town, you know, I don't know, 100 years from now, the Fort River dries up and doesn't flood there anymore, and the town wants to do X, Y, Z there. Um, the town will need to keep it for passive and outdoor recreation purposes. So there will be a, there will be a survey that goes on record with this. It, it might be worth considering like it's just a signage at the beginning of, you know, the, the, the cart path, you know, you're entering a conservation area or something like that when the time comes. Um, yeah, we will have to have on the kiosk both a reference to the park grant as well as a reference to CPA dollars were used in this process. Okay, and then the, the final question I have about the order is, um, it's actually in, Oh, it's in B. Um, the $400,000, is that only for this parcel or is that for the entire uh, Hickory Ridge 150 acres? No, that is the 120 from the CPA and the 280 from the grant is only for this trail. Okay, so the 400,000 is is that. It's the four, the 120 plus the 280. Correct. Okay, thank you. Just need that clarification. This is a great project. Thank you. Um, yeah, while you were mentioning needing to get a, rec a recording of the specifying exactly the land being transferred, um, does that description or should that description actually go in the order? This order was approved by both our town attorney and the administrator for the park grant program, Andy. So at this point, if neither one of those 
experts feels like we need to do that, then I do not really want to go down that path. So we will, you know, they will get record. The park grant program will get record that we, if the town council takes this action, that they took this that action on hopefully on January 9th. And we will record a certified copy of the vote and a survey of the 17 acres. And we will have met the grant requirements. It's Sharina who uh, reviewed it? Yes. I don't know. I might want to um, ask the yes, Sharina, that question just to be sure. Andy, what can you repeat what you're proposing to? Uh, it's a question. It's not. Um, I don't want necessarily the answer. I just want to make sure that we've done it right. Whether the description of the land, the actual what we're transfer the set the seventeen acres uh, and and needs to be more fully described in the order, or whether this uh, I mean I think that's it. I will ask her we what we may do is add some language such as as per a plan recorded in the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds, something like that. Yeah. But I um, but I don't want to get into putting we never get into putting a description, you know, a, a surveyor's description of the land in an order. We have never done that. So I just want to avoid setting some sort of very detailed precedent about that. And Sharin did write the order, as I mentioned before. Um, actually, I guess Sonia and Sharin wrote the order together. So yeah, I, I guess that I just would prefer that somebody had asked Sharin and she said, no, no, I'm fine with this the way it is. She did I've review, to, she did review this multiple Yeah, but she times. didn't review it with that question. That's the only thing. Um, Happy to I, unfortunately, her. I'm a, I have a habit at times of thinking like a lawyer myself. Yeah. And then I ask uh, the appropriate lawyer, KP Law, and they either agree or disagree. I'm uh, happy to send it to Sharin right now. Uh, there's one other question I have about the order, but I want to get Kathy's quest, uh, questions first. And then I'll come back to my other. Andy, mine, mine actually goes with yours. I mean, we're, we're looking at a picture and a map. Could we attach it to this order so we all know what we're looking at? As um, and it, you know, I know it's not precise date, but it's it, it, we've got a visual. Um, that, that is the intention that this is a package that it goes with the order. The map goes with the order, and then we would have a survey of the map, the 17 acres be done and then recorded as a package, yes. I think that to, to me that then is answering both Bob's first question, is that what we're talking about? Just these 17, you know, the, the, the map. So if Sharin is double reviewing this, um, that knowing that the map is attached to me is we have to survey that, that piece, but we know what piece we're talking about. It's, it shows pretty where, where it starts and where it ends. So it, I'm adding it as a, if the map is attached, is that enough? So to I'm just building on Andy's question and I'm fine with it, so. Yeah. Andy, can I just quickly say, I'll just insert the, the Sonia common refrain that it's all in the memo. It, the memo includes the map and includes the order. Um, all that sort of goes along with the order. So, you know, we can ask her in those questions, but it all is together in the memo packet for this order. Okay. Yeah, uh, my other question, and I see Bernie's hands up, but uh, Bernie, if you don't mind, at the very end um, of the order, it says that, um, however, no funds shall be um, expended until the town has received a grant um, commitment, does it also need to be saying in that section and the land has been transferred to the recreation department? 
So th this order transfers the land, doesn't it? It gives authority to transfer the land. It's doing two things. Because it's, it's um, authorizing the transfer of the land and then it's uh, setting up the uh, expenditure of the funds and the commitments to go with that. So that last phrase sets the condition that says that no, uh, no grand anticipation note, no funds will be, uh, will be issued, no funds will be expended until certain things happen. Does one of those two things have to be in addition to the grant commitment does there have to be a second one that says the transfer has been made to satisfy the grant requirement? So I guess I'll, I'll say one thing and then I'll ask a question, Andy. One is, I'll say this, the grant administrator who, who has been doing this a long time didn't think that statement at the end was necessary it was it's fine to put it in there but she did not think it was required to put in there because in fact normally this vote would be happening months ago but because of delays in getting the grants out and whatnot we already know we got the grant so so the town has already received a grant commitment in the amount of two hundred eighty thousand dollars. so to some degree that is a little redundant, that last sentence. I don't think it does any harm. Um, but I guess the other thing I would say is that if we're thinking about what the state needs, the state has already reviewed this multiple times and they feel as though the language, and they do this, you know, they, I don't know how many uh, park grants they give out town, uh, statewide, but dozens and dozens, and they, they reviewed this and said, this meets our requirement. So, so you know, I, I think part, part A and part B meet their requirement. And again, they said, well, you know, the, that last sentence is a little superfluous at this point because you've already received official notification from the Executive Office of Environmental Affairs that you got the $280,000 grant. So, so I don't know. Um, Okay. No, that's. I think they're satisfied. I think they're satisfied. That that's a helpful response. Uh, actually, but I, but I will send. You know, whether we need to add some reference to a plan, you know, recorded in the Hampshire County Register of Deeds or something like that to accompany the order does make some sense to me. Okay. No, the the second point that I just raised, I think that you've answered. If we have. Because the way this reads, it isn't obvious um, that we have received the written commitment from the state yet uh, for the grant. But we, but since you say that we have, that that changes it. So it's probably you're right. It's probably not necessary if we've got that written commitment. Uh, let's see who is next in order. Is it, I'm just Go like, ahead, Bernie. I, I think I have a feeling you're probably going to say what I was going to say, but well, thanks. I, I, <laughs> I just just two two a uh, couple of points. I'm I'm always happy to benefit from uh, our chairs thinking like a lawyer, uh, which he's really good at, and I appreciate it. Um, you know, when looking at the boundaries, three of those boundaries are set, and so uh, I would think uh, for our, our friends in the park. Uh, doing the park grants and the like, uh, this this diagram would be more than sufficient. Uh, I don't know that you need to do meets and bounds uh, on the whole thing. Uh, that's one. And for two, I, I do agree that that sentence about we don't get the $280,000, you can't do anything. Uh, that's unnecessary because um, Sonia would, would refuse. <laughs> <laughs> to to sign any uh, any any papers regarding this project if she didn't know that there was funding for it, so um, she can't. So that's uh, that, that's just my little couple of little comments. Thank you. That's not notwithstanding that Sonia loves my projects. Um, I know that Bernie, D Dave. We we most of us love your projects. Sonia is not. I just, find it, so I just find it hilarious because of some of the discussions that you and I have had. 
that we have a project here where we may have too much parking. Is Sonia on this call? I don't think she is. But Sean, Sean knows how much she loves my complex, complicated projects with 20 moving parts or 120. So is there another question? I think it was a, Matt, you had your hand up and then don't. No, I think in the interest of time, I'm, I'm good. Okay, so um, trying to think. Um, I think a motion's in order. Yeah, and I was going to say that I was going to move to recommend to the town council um, approval of order of council order 23-20A um, subject to final review by the town attorney just leave it at that. I won't say what that final review is, but I think we know that it's the question that I posed earlier. I don't think we need to be more specific um, because if we just could, if we hear that Sharin or somebody else at KP Law said, yep, we answered that question, it's done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. the, so again. That's a motion, then I second it. Okay, then the motion I'm going to read it. One more time is uh, move to recommend to the town council approval of council order 23-20A subject to final review by the town attorney. That motion has been made and seconded. And- uh, Andy, I'd like to have it say council order FY23-20A Hickory Ridge property. So I'm just amending it to add in the FY oh. and the title Hickory Ridge property. Okay, got it. Kathy has so, her hand so, uh, the um, motion should read as suggested by Lynn. I, because I'm the maker of the motion, she was a seconder. So it's uh Move to recommend the town council approval of council order 23. FY23. 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 Dash. FY23 dash FY23 dash 20 Ridge property. Ridge property. Subject to final yeah. review by the town attorney. Kathy has her hand up. Kathy? I just have, um, Andy, we added an A on order 2307A, can we just assume that Sean has the word copy and he's adding the A so we don't have to say as amended because we've actually made that one small change in the order. I, the, Lynn can't make the change because- No, she, but I, I, I took a screenshot of this that I will send to um, Sean and uh, David and the, Athena. No, so I'm fine with it. I'm just saying that we, we added an ace and I don't want to make that motion longer. I'm just assuming that change is already in it. <laughs> it's what I'm what I'm voting on. That change is in it. Yeah. Lynn, Lynn is uh I think okay. it's fine because Lynn is gonna make sure that uh fine. that's the order that um we're approving is as without using the words as amended. Yeah, I didn't want to say amend. I just want to make sure we're approving an order with that A in it. So mentally, I can make that leap. Sean is still not with us. Sean's here. I'm here. Yeah, so yeah, we'll make okay the, with that. Yeah, we'll make sure that the the order that goes to the council has it. Yeah, has the A in it. Okay. So um, unless I see hands going up, I'm going to start calling for a vote from members present and um, I do not see no hands. So Lynn. Uh, excuse me, I have to unmute. Oh, unmute, um, aye, in favor. And uh, Bob. Support. And uh, Matt. Support. 
Bernie? Support. Michelle is absent. Kathy? Yes. I am a yes, and Michelle is absent. Alicia is absent. Alicia is absent, I'm sorry. So um, we are three in favor, none opposed, two counselors absent, and three members in support. And uh, so the motion carries. And uh, I think, David, thank you. Good, thank you all very much for your questions. And, and I've already put it out to Sharin, uh, the question that, that Andy posed about uh, including uh, more specific reference to the to a plan in there. Um, and yeah, and I, I, I knew that uh, when, we, when we brought this forward, it would, uh, we're, we're sticking our toes in the Hickory Ridge uh, pond here and and it elicits all these questions well what's coming what's coming oh boy we so i totally get that and we're all excited about it and as i said the we will work on um the the comprehensive plan uh, uh to get to all of you uh and various other boards and committees in the next 60 days or so we we have lost two planners in the last four weeks so uh we're still <laughs> grappling with that a little bit Ben Brager, who was working on this project, is no longer with the town. So that was quite a, a little punch in the stomach for, for me because he was kind of my right-hand person. So we'll get there. But thank you all. Thank you. And uh, we're not sticking our toes in the pond. It's a, it's a river, actually. The river. Oh, there are some ponds out there, too. So oh, OK. Anyway. I stand thank corrected. You. Thank you all. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Happy holidays. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye. So. Uh, few things really that I hope can be really quick. I was thinking that we could um, think about um, information that we need to develop, to have answered in our next meeting when we're gonna get back to having a substantial conversation again about residential property tax fee. Um, but rather than try and brainstorm it as a group, I was wondering if I could just ask the members of the committee, and I will send this out as a memo also, send questions through me, and then I will assemble any questions I receive and forward them to uh, the uh, co-sponsors and uh, to Sean to see that uh, we can then form the conversation next time. And if that's an acceptable um, way to proceed, then we don't need to spend any more time today talking about it. Kathy? Um, I think that sounds fine. Could you do me a big favor and attach it, what we're looking supposed to be looking at? Because I it's not in today's packet. I just don't know which packet to look at. So if you were just talking, my understanding is we're just talking about the special legislation document, which I think is appropriate, and I understand why. So if you would just attach it, it would be great. Okay, I will do that. So anything else on this topic? If not, then um, the other thing that I want to, um, I have two, two quick things. One is about minutes. Um, I had hoped I would get further with minutes, but uh, didn't. But I did spend about an hour on uh, one set, which is September 13, 2022. And I now have it complete. So um, I would move that uh, if, if it's agreeable to the group to um, accept the minutes of September 13, 2022 as amended so moved and second or i second okay um so i'll just do a real quick vote so that we can have a vote on the minutes and then i have one last thing and we can be done um so for the minutes uh lynn aye bob support uh matt support Bernie. Support. Michelle is absent. Kathy. Yes. And I'm yes. And uh, 
Alicia's absence. absence. So we're back to th three to zero, two members absent of the council members and the support of the three resident members. Uh, we don't have a date set for further meetings. And I was uh, going to ask, we had been by agreement for the fall meeting on the day following council meetings so that it would be Tuesdays, the day after council meetings at 3 p.m. And if we uh, have agreement to that, then uh, we should just do it. I, mean, I, I actually vote. have a conflict with that date at three o'clock. On which one, Lynn, January 10th? On January 10th. It, it's at, from three o'clock on, I have a conflict. Is that just that day or? It's just that day. It, it's a very odd situation where, and it's something I can't change. I could meet earlier that day or I could meet Thursday. Um, okay, I think that under that circumstance with, the, with two members absent, uh, I'm either half to myself or through Athena, send out a poll to make sure that uh, the Thursday at three is acceptable. Is there anybody present who would not be available if we can do it on the Thursday? I, you know, I'm both, I'm fine with that, Andy, and I'm also fine with meeting earlier on Tuesday. So um, I think it was Michelle, and I know uh, Matt had issues, you know, in terms of what happens with that Tuesday afternoon. Alicia seems to be able to seize an hour. So I'm just saying that I, I'm fine with both. We can. I, is there any objection to asking about both possibilities? Okay. I, I would really like that because it turns out I also have a conflict at four o'clock on Thursday. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, one would think that my schedule wouldn't be this jammed already, but it is. So. Uh... Why don't we um, put out there under the circumstances then Tuesday at one and Thursday at two? This is the 10th and the 12th, Andy? Yes. It, okay. Yes, it would be the 10th would be at one and the 12th would be at two. Okay. Okay. So I'll. Uh, Compass it all in one single memo. So with that, uh, I have no further uh, business, nothing that uh, is in the unanticipated category. Um, we did not have on the agenda to talk today about the regional school funding and the uh, meeting that was the four town meeting uh, I'm not sure that it was an essential item. We may want to schedule a time to talk about it before the next Fort Town meeting. Uh, so I will try and bear that in mind. So is there anybody else who has anything? And if not, I wish everybody a happy holiday and uh, declare ourselves adjourned. Thank you. Bye. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Athena. Thanks, everybody.